All right, I'll just share my screen. All right, looks like we have a few people on the webinar. So hello. Um, we're just going to give everybody another few seconds to get logged in. Um, and then we will go ahead and get started. Um, I would love to hear from everybody what organization you're representing. So if you could just go into the chat and just let us know um, who you're representing, that would be really fantastic. And please feel free to use the chat um, while the presentation is going to you know, chat through any questions you have or say hello to each other. Um, but I'd love to hear who's here. Okay, we've got Hope's Closet. Heidi from Hope's Closet, nice to have you. And just to make sure, um, can you all see and see my screen? You should see the first slide that says November 29th to December 9th. Um, so if you can see my screen, just let me know. Um, I just want to make sure that everybody can see what I'm talking about. Excellent. Thank you, Mary. And we've got Mary from Harriet Beecher Stowe House. Fantastic. Um, so it's just about two o'clock here on the East Coast, so I will go ahead and get started. Um, hello and welcome to the first webinar for Cincinnati Gives in 2021. Um, this webinar is really all about getting up and running on the Mighty Cause platform so that when Cincinnati Give, Gives begins on November 29th, you will be good and ready to fundraise. Uh, my name is Linda Gerhardt, and I'm the Senior Community Engagement Manager here at Mighty Cause. Uh, we are the platform partner for Cincinnati Gives, so we manage the technology end of this event. And I am going to be walking you through the basics of the platform and participating in the fundraising challenge. And I'm also very happy to be joined um, by Ivy Bear from Cincinnati Magazine. Um, hi, Ivy. Hey, Linda. Thanks for having me. Welcome, everybody. Yeah, thank you all for joining us today. Um, just as a quick look at today's agenda, first we'll be going through the basics of the event so that we are all on the same page about how Cincinnati Gives works. And then I'll be spending some time running through everything you need to know about navigating the Mighty Cause platform and setting yourself up for success during the challenge. Um, and then we'll move into prizes and rules, which is very exciting. And then we'll wrap things up with a Q&A session. Um, since we've got a lot of content to power through today, um, please make use of the questions box in Zoom Zoom if you think of something that you'd like to discuss or know more about during the Q&A session. And also, please feel free to use the chat box. Um, it looks like Ivy is in there, so she can always uh, respond to any questions that you have related to Cincinnati Gives. But we'll make some time to get to questions at the end. All right, so we're going to start off um, with the Cincinnati Gives Challenge Basics. And I'm actually going to turn the mic over to Ivy for the next few slides. So uh, go ahead and take it away, Ivy. Thanks, Linda. Um, so Linda is fantastic. I'm glad um, there's a, a good group on the webinar today. To get to know Linda, you probably are also familiar with the name John. They are the dynamic duo at Mighty Cause. And we at Cincinnati Magazine could not, um, could not produce such an amazing giving challenge without their support and the capabilities of their platform. So I just wanted to give a little shout out to our friends at Mighty Cause. You guys are, are awesome. So to give you a quick little 30 second background on Cincinnati Gives, this is a Cincinnati Magazine initiative. As many of you know, we started in 2016 and our goal um, in 2016, which has really remained, was to create an opportunity and a platform to connect our readers with the nonprofit community, with the organizations in our city, um, and connect you to our readers. And we wanted to do it in a really meaningful way. We wanted to do what we do best, and that is share great content and tell stories and provide you, um, the local or nonprofit organizations, an opportunity to tell your own story um, to our readers. And we didn't just want to do that. We didn't just want to create a publication, um, but we also, and, and an advertising opportunity, but we also wanted to create a platform that 
um, enabled you to generate real dollars and connect with real donors and new donors at uh, end of year, really kicking off on Giving Tuesday. So that's how Cincinnati Gives was created. And it's really the combination of two pieces, the annual guide to giving. You see the cute elephant from the Cincinnati Zoo a couple of years ago um, on the screen there, our guide to giving, which comes out right before Thanksgiving and the online giving challenge, which um, as Linda mentioned, kicks off uh, for 10 days on November 29th. So a few things, and we'll get into more detail here, but you do not have to participate in both parts of the program. Um, you can do one, you can do both. You can advertise in the guide to giving and not participate in the challenge, or you can um, just participate in the challenge and not advertise in the publication or, you know, best case scenario, you do both. If you are able to do both, that's really when you get access to all of the benefits. Um, but we also understand that not every organization has a marketing budget or um, is able to advertise in the publication. And so that's why we wanted to create an opportunity that uh, doesn't cost an organization anything. And the online giving challenge does not cost, uh, cost you anything to participate. So what is the opportunity for you in the guide to giving? Linda, if you wanna to go to the next slide. So the opportunity is what you see here uh, with the cancer-free kids example. It's a full page profile opposite a full page ad. So essentially you get a full page spread in our guide to giving. We send the guide to giving to all of our subscribers with our December best of the city issue which actually comes out, as I said, right before Thanksgiving. We will also provide you with as many copies as you need for distribution throughout the year. The guide lives year round on Cincinnati Magazine's website in the form of a digital edition. And then we also distribute it on Fountain Square during Light Up the Square. So we do everything we can to get it in the hands of our readers and prospective donors. And as you can see, the profile includes um, all the really pertinent information you would want to share. Your obviously your mission, key services, your leadership, ways for folks to get involved, and ways for them to connect with you throughout the year. Some benefits and some bonus, um, some bonus add-ons by being a part of the publication. We also will bonus you an additional full page ad that's included in the cost that will run in the magazine of your choice, the issue of your choice in 2022. And we do this because we know um, end of year is a really important time, but we also understand that you have lots going on during the year and there's most likely an opportunity at some point at another time of the year that you want to advertise. And so that additional full page is no cost to you. We also, um, for those that advertise in the publication and then also participate in the challenge, some of the extra benefits of being in the publication with the challenge specifically is we will include a direct social post all about you with a direct link to your challenge page during the challenge. So you will um, essentially have a social post on Cincinnati Magazine platforms promoting you and letting all of our followers know you're participating in the challenge and drive traffic directly to your page. Your profile will also live year round on CincinnatiMagazine.com. We have a gives, a dedicated gives channel on our website. And that's where the digital edition lives. It also is where your profile will live year round. So that has a direct link to your website, which is great for um, SEO throughout the year. And two new things that we've added this year, which are really exciting and they're not even listed on this slide. They're so new. Um, two things. One, in the search function on the challenge page on the challenge website, 
when folks go to search, they can search by cause, um, name. We have added a new search function called featured organization. So you will be included as a featured organization if you are part of the publication. And lastly, we have added an additional bonus prize. Just those that advertise in the publication are eligible for an additional $1,000 bonus prize that's available this year. So lots of really, really great stuff. The total investment is $3,700 um, to be a part of the publication and have access to all those great benefits. But again, you don't have to be a part of the publication to participate in the online challenge, but it is a great opportunity if you're able to take advantage. And last but not least, Linda, I know I'm totally going over my time. Today is technically the deadline to reserve your space, although we are not laying out the publication until next week. So be sure to reach out to me if you have any questions and I will be sure to get you reserved. All right, thank you so much, Ivy, for all that helpful information. Um, so with all of that information presented about the publication, I'm really gonna be covering the online component of Cincinnati Gives. Um, and Cincinnati Gives is a 10-day fundraising campaign. It starts on November 29th at 5 p.m. and goes through December 9th at 5 p.m. Um, and that gives you a perfect opportunity to uh, catch some of that Giving Tuesday momentum and take advantage of it. Um, this is, again, the online component to Cincinnati Gives. Um, the Cincinnati Gives Guide to Giving Edition, so this doesn't cost anything to participate in, um, and there is a whopping $35,000 in prizes available to participating nonprofits, which um, even if you aren't able to participate in the uh, Guide to Giving component of it, participating in the um, online fundraising challenge is definitely a, a huge advantage, and it gives you the opportunity to take home some prize money for your nonprofit. So stepping back for a minute, what is a fundraising challenge and how do they work? What is this online component all about? Um, in a fundraising challenge like, like Cincinnati Gives, you are engaging in some friendly competition with other Cincinnati nonprofits to win prizes and bonus challenges, which we're going to detail a little bit later on in the presentation. Um, you're spreading awareness of your nonprofit's mission and work to people who live in your community where you're making a difference, um, and it allows you to reach new donors and build your base of supporters. Fundraising challenges are also like catnip to sponsors, so you can nurture existing relationships with sponsors and community partners and even begin new ones. It's a really fantastic icebreaker if there's somebody that you've been wanting to work with um, as a sponsor. It's a really great way to get your foot in the door and start that conversation. Um, and there are also some really important opportunities to engage your tried and true supporters and even your board members through peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, which is something that you are able to access for free on the Mighty Cause platform. The first step to participate in Cincinnati Gives in, and have a chance at winning some of that $35,000 um, available in prizes is registering your nonprofit at CincinnatiGives.org. Um, if you haven't already done that, it's very simple. Um, so please, if you haven't done it, feel free to open up a tab and get registered now so that you can take some of the information in this webinar and get started. Um, once you're registered, um, you'll create and customize your nonprofit's profile on Mighty Cause, which will be the main place for your fundraising during Cincinnati Gives. Um, and as Ivy mentioned, this is a year-round profile. Um, so you can use this throughout the year outside of Cincinnati Gives. Um, so if you don't have a, a place to fundraise or you'd like to add another component to your online fundraising, uh, Mighty Cause can fulfill that need for you. Um, and part of getting registered for Cincinnati Gives is getting set up on the Mighty Cause platform so that you can fundraise on Mighty Cause year-round. Um, if you have participated in Cincinnati Gives on Mighty Cause in the past, your nonprofit profile actually stays the same. It's an evergreen profile that's connected to your tax exempt status. So you don't need to create a new one. You, don't, you just update your nonprofit's profile um, for this year's challenge so that it's current. And we're gonna talk a little bit more about how to do that um, as we go on. 
Then you plan a fundraising campaign uh, where you promote your organization to your supporters on social media, through email, having virtual and in-person events, um, and any uh, where else and, and through any other means that you usually use to communicate with your supporters. Um, to boost your campaign and get even more people engaged, um, you can also reach out to uh, your supporters and ask them to fundraise for you. Peer-to-peer uh, -peer fundraising where an individual creates a fundraiser on behalf of your organization is one of the benefits benefits of being on the Mighty Cause platform. Um, so that's another way you can bolster your campaign and get people involved. Um, and then between November 29th and December 9th, you just raise money for your cause and try to win some of the prizes that are available. So now we're going to go into how to build and customize your profile for Cincinnati Gives um, and what through everything that's on your dashboard, which is a little bit technical, but I promise it's very helpful um, as you get started for this year. And even though it's a little bit dry, um, you'll be thankful that you have some of this information as you get you dive into the platform and get started. Okay, so as I mentioned, and I don't want to beat a dead horse, but the first step is registering your nonprofit. So if you have not registered yet, I promise it won't hurt my feelings. If you open up a tab and do that while I'm talking, um, you will get a response within 24 to 48 hours. So keep your eye out for an approval email that lets you know that you have been accepted into the event. Um, you can only register once. So once you're registered, you can add other people as admins so that they can help edit your profile, access your report and work on your campaign. Um, and one thing I do want to mention is that you will need to create a Mighty Cause account before you can register. Um, so if you go to the registration form and you aren't set up on Mighty Cause, the first thing you'll have to do is set up a, an account on Mighty Cause and choose your nonprofit. Um, and if you happen to start the form and need to come back to it later to submit it, um, you will need to log into your account. So for instance, if you start filling out the registration form, Form. Unfortunately, Greg from accounting can't come in and finish the form for you. You'll need to go back in under your account and finish filling out that form so that you can submit it and be um, accepted into the event. And everybody else that you would need to add to give them access to your page, you can do that after the fact through your nonprofit's dashboard, which we're going to get into. Um, so as I mentioned, your dashboard is really where you're going to be spending a lot of time as the campaign kicks into gear. Um, so you'll want to take a moment to get familiar with your dashboard and get the lay of the land. Um, when you are an administrator, meaning that you have some back end control over your organization's profile, um, and when you're logged into Mighty Cause, you'll see a menu on the left side of your nonprofit's profile where you can access all of the tools and features that are available to you through Mighty Cause. Um, this is your dashboard. So when I'm talking about your admin dashboard, um, that sidebar on your organization's profile is what I am talking about. Um, so I want to go from the top down so that you understand where all of these tools are and can uh, access it and navigate it very easily. Um, so first up is your overview screen. This is where you can get caught up on key metrics and performance indicators. And there's actually a lot that you can customize here. Um, so if you've participated in Cincinnati Gives in the past and you want to track your donor retention, which is always an important metric to keep track of, you can easily do that from your overview screen. And you can also add a lot of different metrics that you may want to keep track of throughout your campaign. Um, so it's definitely worth customizing so that you can quickly pull some stats and help measure your progress as you go along. Um, your organization profile is really the the centerpiece of your nonprofit's presence for Cincinnati Gives. And from your dashboard, you can edit the public facing profile, which you can also do on the page. So there's a little bit of redundancy there. You can go through your dashboard to make edits, and you can also just click buttons on the page and edit it right on the page. Um, under fundraising, you'll find all of your key fundraising tools, which is hopefully easy enough to remember. Um, some of those tools include matching grants, uh, campaign pages where you can view and track and even start peer-to-peer -peer campaigns and so on. So basic rule of thumb is that if you are looking for a fundraising tool, it's probably under fundraising. So very easy and intuitive. Um, reports is also pretty intuitive. This is obviously where you'll find um, any reports that you're looking for. That includes your donation report, your donor data. Um, you can view your disbursement report so that you can rec reconcile your 
deposits, and you can also add and track offline donations here if you choose to do that. Um, on Mighty Cause, you actually have a good amount of control over the checkout process and the donation process. Um, so you can customize that under checkout on your dashboard. Um, one thing I will point out here is that under checkout, you can fill out your thank you page, which is a to-do list item that we recommend completing. Um, that's a page that everybody sees once they complete their donation. And you can also add a custom uh, message to the receipt that Mighty Cause sends each donor after they've completed completed their donation, which helps you automate some donor acknowledgements. And under settings, it's basically all of the housekeeping for your organization. You can set up EFT or direct deposits so that you get your, um, your deposits a lot quicker and more directly and don't have to worry about postal service delays. Um, if you've been following the news, that's definitely recommended because there are some postal service delays. So if you are getting a check, um, you may have to wait longer to get the funds. Um, you can also add your administrators here. If there are people who have access to your page who have left your organization, you can remove them so they no longer have access. And you can also do things like update your legal information, your address, and so on, just to make sure that we have all of the correct information about your nonprofit. So definitely, if you haven't checked in since last year and you participated in the past, it's good to take a look at your settings and make sure that everything is up to date. So your profile is really the heart of your Cincinnati Gives campaign, and you'll want to make sure that it's reflecting well on your nonprofit. Um, this is the main link that you'll share with your supporters. So just copy and paste the URL of your organization profile from your browser to share to your channels to communicate with supporters. Um, you can do a lot to customize the look and feel of your page so that it reflects your nonprofit's brand. And this is also where you will talk about your work, your mission, and make the case to donors that they should make a donation to your nonprofit during Cincinnati Gives. Um, if you've participated in previous years, a lot of this is probably already in place for you, but we do recommend check in, checking in year after year and just cleaning it up and making sure that there are no outdated pieces of information there and that everything is set for this year's event um, and you don't have any references to past uh, Cincinnati Gives campaigns. Your banner image and logo are really the first things that people see when they go to your profile to make a donation. They're right above the donate button. So um, this is these are key parts of your page since they're the first ones that you see. Uh, your logo in particular is used to represent your nonprofit all over the Cincinnati Gives site. Um, it's in the search, it's on the leaderboards and so on. Um, so you'll wanna make sure that you show um, all of these things, just a little bit of love just to make sure that you're representing your brand and your organization well. Um, your logo is a one-to-one -one aspect ratio, which basically just means square. Um, unfortunately, landscape or horizontal logos don't work in that image container, so you'll need to just make sure that that is square before you upload your logo. Uh, your banner image um, is what sits behind your logo, and it really sets the tone and the look and the feel for your page. Um, we recommend choosing a banner that's related to your work, maybe a photo or something like that that you can put behind your logo. Um, if you you don't have one that you think works, you can also choose one from the library of banner images that we've provided for you in that, um, in that tool. Um, and you can also add a filter to your background image to make it look even better. Um, and a filter is the same thing that you would use on an Instagram photo. It's a wash of color that can make it sort of fade into the background a bit more or can even pull out a specific color and really make it pop. Um, and your theme color uh, carries throughout your page. Um, you can either choose a color that you think looks nice and complementary with your logo and banner image um, from our color picker, or you can enter in your brand colors if you have a brand kit at your nonprofit. Um, when you're looking to refresh your page year after year, these really are the easiest things that you can adjust to make the page feel current and refreshed. Um, uploading a special Cincinnati Gives logo that you've created, or just changing out your banner image and adjusting your theme color really makes a 
huge difference in how your page looks. Um, we also recommend taking a look at the page on mobile once you've uploaded these things, um, because Mighty Cause is mobile responsive and desktops and lap laptops have a different view than your phone. Basically, it kind of flips them. Uh, so you just want to make sure that everything is looking good on both a computer screen and a smartphone. So just take a pull out your phone and take a look at it and make sure that it looks the way you want, um, because unfortunately, the cropping is a little bit different, especially for your banner image. So you'll just want to make sure that it looks like you want on a mobile device. Um, below all, your logo, the donate button, and all of that is a goal in progress bar. Um, so this is where you can track your goal and show everybody how much you've raised during Cincinnati Gives. Um, if you have um, participated in Cincinnati Gives in the past, you want to adjust this from year to year so that you're only counting uh, donations that were made for this year's event. Um, right on your profile, you have a goal and progress bar um, with some metrics below that that show the number of donors you've gotten and how much you've raised in dollars. This is all customizable. This is not set in stone. Um, so if you don't want to have a progress bar, if a financial goal is not your primary goal, you can remove that. Um, and you can also choose whether you'd like to show the number of donors, um, what kinds of donors you would like to show if you'd like to include offline donors. Um, and you can also opt out of displaying the amount of money that you've raised. Um, basically, every editable feature on your profile has a little pencil icon next to it. And when you click on that, that will op open up a screen where you can edit it. Um, and that's what you'll want to use to edit your uh, page metrics. Um, for your goal, you'll just want to make sure that you're counting donations from November 29th at 5 p.m. 2021 when the event starts so that you're only including this year's donations um, because it may be including every single donation you've received since you've started using Mighty Cause. So you'll just want to clear that out and basically bring it to zero so that you're starting fresh for 2021's campaign and people are not looking at old donations that you've received or a goal that you've already met. On your profile, you have an open text area where you can make your fundraising appeal. Um, you can share information about your organization and your work and really use the space to persuade donors to give to your nonprofit for Cincinnati Gives. It's really the heart of your page, so I highly recommend doing more than just copying and pasting your mission statement. That's really the least you can do, um, but you really want to use this space to show it some love, tell the story of your organization, um, what you're doing for this campaign, and really utilize this to connect with donors. It is a simple inline text editor, so if you can use Microsoft Word, you can use our text editor, and I have to say this text editor is actually actually a lot easier than Microsoft Word. So most of you are well equipped to use this section well. Um, one thing that I highly recommend is making sure that your story has more than just text. Uh, most people won't read a wall of text. Um, so you want to break that up with the use of headers, bullet points, graphics, photos. Um, you can also add a campaign video. Um, we do not host videos on Mighty Cause. We have a lot of capabilities, but we're not able to be a video hosting platform. So you will need to upload it to YouTube or Vimeo first, but you can embed it right on your story so that people can watch it on your Mighty Cause profile for Cincinnati Gives. Um, and really the more you can do to make a multimedia experience on your page, the longer people are likely to stay on your page and engage with your content, and that makes them more likely to donate. Um, so another thing you can do here, um, the last thing I'll mention is that you can create a custom tab, which is kind of a secondary story. So if you have some information that you'd like to share that doesn't quite fit into your story, you can create a custom tab and add it there. Um, some things that you may want to include in a custom tab would be um, hours of operation, information about any events you're having, um, if you want to include your mission statement and information about about leadership at your nonprofit. You can do that all in a custom tab um, and it just kind of keeps your story area clean and people can find out more in the custom tab if they wish to, but that's not required. That's just a place where you can put any information that doesn't quite fit into your story. So social media is a, a big part of Cincinnati Gives, um, and you can actually feed your social media content 
right into your profile by connecting your social media accounts to Mighty Cause. So um, you can connect your Instagram account um, and we'll pull in your feed so that your profile automatically updates with anything that you post to Instagram. Um, you can also add or, or connect a Facebook gallery to pull any photos that you upload in. Um, and you also have a media gallery so you can add images that connect to your story and sort of tell a visual story about the work that you do and really make your page pop and make it feel jazzy and interesting to donate. Owners. Um, and this is on to a little bit of the dry section. I want to talk about reports because they are actually really important and you're going to need to know where to find these. Um, so when somebody makes a donation on Mighty Cause, um, we, uh, send a, we send an email to everybody who is listed as an administrator for your nonprofit. So everybody who's listed as an admin on that screen in your settings will receive a notification as soon as a donation is made. Um, the donor data that's in your donation report is real time. Um, but I do want to note that when you go to your donation report, you're going to see a limited view. You're just going to get basically a snapshot of that donation. But there's a lot of data that we collect about each donation, and you can access that by downloading the full report. You'll download a spreadsheet that gives you basically everything you could possibly want to know about that donation. And if you have some uh, custom information that you're collecting from donors, that would be where you would access it. But your donation report on the screen will just tell you who made the donation, how much it was, and give you a little bit of information about that donor, but you can access the full report by downloading that spreadsheet. Um, you also have a disbursement report. Um, if you have EFT, uh, set up, which I highly recommend, and you're getting uh, your payouts through direct deposit. Um, you can find the donation reports, the disbursement report there that tells you exactly what's included. It'll show you any fees that are taken out of your um, your disbursement. If you are getting a direct deposit, that is actually deposited twice monthly into the account that you have connected. If you are uh, getting your disbursements via check, they are sent out once per month around the 10th of each month. Um, so we'll send it out on the 10th and hope that it gets to you in a timely manner. Unfortunately, the Postal Service is having some issues with delays. So that's one of the reasons I highly urge that you set up EFT. Um, and yeah, when you get your deposit, you want to pull your disbursement report. Um, and find out what's included so that you can reconcile what's included in that deposit and know if you still have uh, some donations to expect to be paid out. Um, so one of the really cool reports uh, that we have available is your donor retention report. So if, it's, if this is not your first year with Cincinnati Gives, um, this is a really helpful report for you because you'll be easily able to identify donors who've given to you in the past for Cincinnati Gives that have not given yet this year. Um, and it'll also tell you how you're doing with donor retention. Um, across the nonprofit sector, uh, donor retention is unfortunately very low, below 50%. So some of those gains that we make when we acquire new donors are lost when we don't retain the donors that we have acquired in the past. So you want to keep an eye on that metric, especially if this is not your first year. Um, and you can pull a detailed report that uh, tells you exactly who has not given, that's given in the past, which makes it really easy to target those donors with outreach. Send them a quick email, make a quick phone call if you have your their phone number, because all of the donors who've given to you through, for Cincinnati gives in the past are low-hanging fruit. Those are people who've already uh, made a commitment to your organization. They've made a donation, so it should be easier to bring them back and get them to make another donation. And the donor retention report is a really handy tool so that you can easily identify those donors. Um, one thing that I highly recommend on the uh, during the event is having some emails kind of pre-built in whatever email marketing program you're, you, you're using, whether that's MailChimp or Constant Contact, and you can pull that retention report, just plug it in and send the email so that you're doing some targeted outreach to those specific donors who've already given to you for Cincinnati Gives in the past. Um, as I mentioned, you have quite a bit of uh, control over your checkout flow in the donation process. Um, under your checkout flow is where you will choose the donor data that you want to collect. So for instance, if phone numbers are really important to your plan to follow up with um, donors, you want to make sure that you have that 
uh, opted into in your donor, uh, your checkout flow. Um, you can also use custom donation suggestions to reinforce your impact. And this is a, a really great tool that I recommend utilizing. Um, you can choose the amount. So by default, Mighty Cause will suggest that people donate in $25, $50, $75, and $100, but you can customize those. Um, and one of the things that is really effective when you're talking about connecting with donors is making that number, that amount that you're, sug you're suggesting they donate, um, connect to a real world item or service that your nonprofit provides. Uh, most of us who've worked in nonprofits know and that people really enjoy the experience of donating things. They like to make in-kind donations. Um, that's something that food banks all over the country have sort of grappled with is the fact that people really love the experience of going to a store, picking out some food and donating it and knowing that that food will help feed a family in their community. Um, and one of the ways that you can sort of get around that and incorporate that experience into the um, the online donation process is by using these impact descriptions that you can connect to these amounts. So I highly recommend using those donation suggestions and the descriptions. I also recommend if you've participated in the past, just taking a look um, because unfortunately those descriptions are also sometimes where old information goes to die. So you want to check in and make sure that you don't have references to any old campaigns if you've participated in Cincinnati Gives on Mighty Cause in the past, because sometimes it can hide there and you just forget to update it from year to year. Um, so definitely check it out if it's not your first rodeo and you've participated in the past. And you can also preview the entire checkout flow, the whole process without having to make a test donation, which is really helpful. Um, you can see the entire process your donor goes through and make sure that it's not too cumbersome, that you're not asking too much of them. And sometimes donors will just reach out to you um, if they have a question or get stuck in the process, um, even though we do offer support to them and to you as well. Sometimes they'll just reach out to you because they are familiar with you. Um, so it's good to be aware of what that process looks like for them. So you can do a full preview of your checkout flow um, with that section on your dashboard. So post-checkout customizations are really important. Um, your thank you page, as I mentioned, is one of the to-do list items that it is recommended you complete before um, you start fundraising for Cincinnati Gives. And those are under post-checkout, which is under the uh, checkout menu on your admin dashboard. Um, so your thank you page displays after somebody completes a donation, they will be taken to that page and you can include a message. You can even embed a video um, and have a CTA button or link that you put there if you wanna lead them somewhere else. And that kind of helps you that you thank them and acknowledge their donation very quickly. Um, and you can also add a custom message in the automated donation receipt that Mighty Cause sends your donors. So one of the things Things that's important to know is that all of the donations on Mighty Cause for Cincinnati Gives are processed through the Mighty Cause Charitable Foundation, which is a donor advised fund. And the benefit of having that set up is that we are able to send the tax receipts to your donors. And they're a little bit dry, they're just, they're, they're a tax receipt, but you have the ability to add a custom message, which means that you've acknowledged your donor through that tax receipt. Um, obviously you wanna do some more follow-up and a more personal thank you, but this helps buy you some time. Uh, statistically, how quickly you thank your donors after they complete their donation um, is important to whether they will come back and give again. So by using these tools that are built into Mighty Cause, you can automate that so that when you do make your follow-up, you can make sure it's very thoughtful and intentional, but they've already gotten an automated thank you in a few different places so they have been acknowledged. Um, and you can also preview that entire experience through your checkout, um, your, your checkout and post-checkout options in your dashboard so that you know exactly what that looks like and what your donors are seeing. So matching grants are an interesting tool that you can use, and we definitely recommend using them. Uh, basically, a matching grant is like a BOGO sale on donations. Um, what a, a matching grant does is you get a donation from a sponsor or a larger donor, or maybe even a board member, and you use that money to match incoming donations. So you're offering your donors a good deal, and you're allowing them to get more for their money, or at least the feeling that they're getting more for their money 
by donating $25, they're actually able to donate $50. Or if they help you meet a certain goal, if you're doing a threshold match, like a match that kicks in when you raised your first thousand dollars, they can help you achieve that. And this is a really great marketing tool that you can use to spark interest in your campaign. Um, so we have a whole tool where you can enter that information. And the wonderful thing about the matching grant tool is that we do the math for you so that you don't have to worry about um, keeping track of that. We keep track of it for you so that you don't have to and you can focus on connecting with donors and running your campaign. Um, the matching grant does not have to be paid through the platform. Um, you can collect a check or however your donor would like to pay. However, it is helpful if they do fulfill that match through the platform because then it counts towards your prizes, which we're going to talk about in just a moment. Um, and you have the option to automatically add the matches to your total as uh, they are made. So for instance, when somebody donates $25 and you have a one-to-one -one match in action, um, it'll add $50 to your total on your, uh, your page, that brought progress bar we were talking about earlier. Um, if you have the donor that's willing to make the donation through the platform, you wanna make sure that you don't choose that because you don't wanna double count the grant. Um, so basically the rule of thumb is that if they are making their donation online, do not check the box that says that you should add it to the totals on your page. If you're making the do if the grantor is making the donation through a check or some other means, um, you want to go ahead and check that because we'll just automatically add it to your total so that you don't need to do anything else beyond entering the matching grant. All right, so your settings, again, this is kind of the housekeeping section where you can add admins, um, definitely year after year. If you're like any other nonprofit, you might have some turnover. Um, so if you had uh, people that have left your organization, you can remove them as admins. If you have any volunteers or any new staff members that will be helping with your campaign, you can actually just add them through settings. Um, and you can also update your legal address if any of that information has changed. Um, I highly, highly, highly recommend setting up EFT, electronic funds transfer, so that you can get your uh, donations quick, more quickly and you can get them more seamlessly. You don't have to wait on a delivery of a check. Um, and you can also customize your URL. Um, some of us have really uh, long legal names that don't lend themselves well to marketing endeavors, um, but you can customize and shorten that in your settings. Um, and you can also uh, control the, uh, the text and the image that displays when you share your link on social media. Um, social media platforms will pull some information from your page and kind of put it on there. Um, but that may, may not be what you want. So you can actually add an image um, that is specially created for social media and you can customize the information that is shared along with it if you'd like to do that as well. All right, so as you're gearing up for your campaign, one of the things that I really recommend is that you utilize the nonprofit toolkit. Um, Cincinnati Gives and Mighty Cause have worked together to create a toolkit that's full of great information that will help you run a successful campaign. Um, this is also where you'll find the recording of any webinars that you missed. So if for some reason you need to duck out of this one a little bit early, the recording will be posted in the nonprofit toolkit. Um, but the really great stuff in the toolkit, um, you have some frequently asked questions. So if you're one wondering how something works for your campaign, wondering what the rules are, you can find that information in the FAQs um, that are under resources. And you'll also have some how to's. So if you're wondering, how do I add a matching grant? How do I do this? You can access that information through the nonprofit toolkit. Um, and the really fantastic thing that I love is that you can borrow templates for email and social media. So if you're not quite sure what to post, if you have some writer's block, or you just want an example of what kinds of things you should post for um, Cincinnati Gives on your social media or how to build an email, there are actually some templates that you can use. You can copy and paste them and just customize them um, to make everything a little bit more easy because it's a longer campaign. So you may want to, you know, check those out. So if you are hard up, hard up for ideas or just want to see some examples, those templates are really helpful um, and they help you hit the ground running when you're writing these emails and social media posts. And there's also some logos and photos that you can use to sort of jazz up your communications to your supporters for Cincinnati Gives. All right, so now we're gonna move into the rules and prizes for Cincinnati Gives. All right, so we have grant, grand prizes available. And again, this is only for donations that are made from November 29th at 5 p.m. through December 9th at 5 p.m. So these, these are available for the 
the period of Cincinnati Gives not outside of it. Uh, first place gets $10,000, which is a huge, generous prize. Second place gets $6,000. Third place gets $4,000. Uh, fourth place gets $2,000. And fifth place gets $1,000. Um, and basically, what this is doing is tracking your total fundraising for Cincinnati Gives. You'll see a leaderboard when the site goes live on November 29th at 5 p.m. And you'll be ranked according to how much money you have raised during that time. So these are the rankings. There's prizes for the top five or organizations, and you can track your progress on the leaderboard. So they change frequently. It's really anybody's game. Um, and so from day to day, it'll change. And you want to check the leaderboard on the live event site to see where you are. Um, and definitely looking at where you're placed. And if you're about to crack the top five or crack into the top three, you can use that as a marketing tool to get your donors involved, post it on social media or send an email. Um, but this is where a lot of the prizes are. This reflects the totality of your fundraising for Cincinnati Gives. There are also bonus challenges. So there's a lot of those that are available. You want to make sure that you understand what is available and what's, when you need to participate and how to participate. Um, so you can go to the prizes page to see this full breakdown. Um, but there's the Meet Your Match prize for $2,000, a small organization bonus for $1,000, a profile organization bonus for $1,000, a Giving Tuesday bonus of $3,500. So Giving Tuesday is on November 3rd this year. That's the Tuesday after Thanksgiving. Um, so there's a special bonus prize available on Giving Tuesday. Um, and then there's some other bonuses. Um, bonus number one, number two. Um, bonus number three is a full page ad in Cincinnati Magazine, which is a really fantastic prize. Um, bonus number four is 2000 And bonus number five is a digital ad. Is, it's $2,000 in digital ad spend on CincinnatiMagazine.com, which is really helpful in getting people to go to your page and make donations or whatever you would like them to do throughout the year. Um, again, these are all listed on the rules and prizes tab on CincinnatiGives.org. Um, it's worth taking a look at it, studying it, making sure that you understand it, um, answering, having any questions that you have about the prize schedule answered, um, because these are also good marketing tools. Um, your donors and your supporters want to help you out. They want to help you win prizes and win additional money for your nonprofit. So making them aware that you're up for a prize and you're trying to win a prize um, can be really helpful in getting donors excited about giving to your nonprofit for Cincinnati Gives. All right, and so the rules, um, you must be a 501c3 organization serving the greater Cincinnati area to participate. Um, that is something that I believe you will disclose to us in your registration form. And so we'll verify that before you are accepted into the event. Um, participating organizations are eligible for one grand prize and two bonus challenges. So thankfully it's not possible for one organization to completely sweep prizes. So there's lots of opportunities to win, and there are some limits on how much you can win just to give everybody a fair shot at winning some of that prize money. Um, organizations cannot donate to themselves. That is important to keep in mind. That's an important rule to be aware of. Um, you must have at least 10 unique donors to be eligible for a grand prize. Um, and there's always this question of what is a unique donor? Um, a unique donor is an individual. Um, it's actually a little hard to game our system because we can see a lot about each transaction on the back end. So when people create dummy email addresses or they're using the same card in different names, it tends to get flagged in our system. So basically you need 10 individual people who are donating to your nonprofit to be eligible for one of the grand prizes. Um, and you also have the ability to add offline donations to reflect the total fundraising that you've done for Cincinnati Gives. So some donors like to give in cash or check, and we want to make sure that that's uh, something that you can add to your total on your organization profile. But unfortunately, th th those do not count toward prizes. So as much as possible, you want to direct people to give through your nonprofit profile on the Cincinnati Gives website, um, because the offline donations, you can certainly log them. You can add them to your nonprofit profile and have them count toward your goal there, but they don't count toward bonus prizes. They don't count toward leaderboard prizes, um, and they don't count toward your 10 unique donors. Those need to be online donors. So those are things to, that you want to be aware of as you're strategizing your campaign um, and make sure that you're in compliance with all of these rules. 
Um, all right, lastly, you have a mighty cause at your service for Cincinnati Gives. We are here to support you as you gear up for the campaign and during the campaign. Um, we're also available to your donors. So if a donor didn't get their receipt for some reason, um, they can contact us directly and we're happy to send it to them. So please feel free to send people with questions like that to support at mightycause.com. Um, we are a nine to five operation. Um, we are on the East Coast, so nine to five Eastern time is when we are available and answering tickets that you submit. Um, if you are a phone person, you can also give us a call at 202-800-1618 during those hours. And we're happy to talk you through any questions you have. Um, but yeah, make use of uh, Mighty Cause's support. That's part of the benefit of utilizing Mighty Cause for an event like Cincinnati Gives is that we are here to help you. If you get stuck trying to figure out how to do something on your profile, or you just can't find something, um, um, on your profile, no matter how hard you look, please don't waste too much time on it. Reach out to support because we will send you a quick response and help you get to wherever you need to be. Um, so we're here to support you. Don't forget about support because we can help you out with any questions you may have regarding the platform. All right, and just uh, to mention our next webinar, our next webinar is all about strategy. So if you wanna know more about matching grants, how those work and how that whole process comes together, if you wanna think about peer-to-peer -peer and how you can get people involved in peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, that's all going to be covered in the strategy webinar on October 20th at 3.30 p.m. Eastern time. Um, you can find the link in the nonprofit toolkit on cincinnatigives.org. I really hope you'll sign up for that because this webinar is all about just getting started, but that webinar is really going to be about diving into fundraising strategy so that you can make sure that Cincinnati Gives is successful for your nonprofit. All right, so I wanted to take some time for questions. Um, I saw there was a lot going on in the chat, so I just want to make sure um, that we get everything that has transpired there. Um, oh, okay, so we have one question um, from Christy. What are the dimensions for the banner? It's a very odd size. Yes, <laughs> so um, the banner image doesn't have any it's, I think it's like 50 to something. The ratio is in the crop tool. So basically you want a landscape photograph or image to use for your banner. And there's a cropping tool that you can use within um, your banner upload tool. It's, we use a program called Upload Care and we'll crop it for you. So you can upload a photo and then use the cropping tool to get it to the exact specifications of the banner. Um, as far as pixel sizes go, uh, we don't have any recommendations recommendations for that just because it, we are mobile responsive. So the actual dimensions change um, as the size of the screen it's being viewed on changes. So it'll look very different on a mobile device than it does on your desktop at your office with a great big monitor. So um, definitely using a, a file like that's a large size and then using the cropping tool will get it to exactly where you want it to be and where it needs to be to look good. I wish I had a, a pixel uh, ratio that I could give you, but use the cropping tool select a photo that you would like for that banner and then just use the cropping tool to get it to that weird ratio. It definitely is an odd size. It's not a standard uh, photograph size um, and that cropping tool will help you uh, get it to the size it needs to be to work in that Vantage image container. Um, so I'm sorry, that's a little bit of an odd size, but the cropping tool should take care of that for you. Um, so just make use of that tool. All right, so let's see. Um, it looks like there's a question about reusing your profile if it was part of another challenge or another campaign. Oh, okay, yeah, that one is from Tammy. Um, so yeah, definitely you're using the same actual page. Um, so your nonprofit profile is an evergreen page. You can use it year round. Um, and it's actually connected to your EIN through the IRS, your tax exempt status. And when I was talking earlier about how donations are processed through the Mighty Cause Foundation, which is our donor advised fund, making a donation connected to that profile is actually how donors advise 
their donation. So that's how we know where to send it basically. Um, and you can, so you're gonna be using the same page. I would recommend um, updating it to indicate that you are participating in Cincinnati Gives um, and definitely uh, you know, updating the campaign information there, uh, telling a slightly different story. It depends on what you have on your page, but basically if you're reusing the page for, um, Cincinnati Gives and you used it for a Community Thrives, just make sure that you're wiping any Community Thrives information from your page so that people know that you're part of Cincinnati Gives. It'll be in the URL and you'll have the logo on your page once the event is in progress, um, but it can be confusing for donors to go to your page for Cincinnati Gives and see a reference to a Community Thrives in your story. So I just would recommend taking a look at it and just doing a quick audit for any information that is specific to a Community Thrives. And it's also worth um, taking a look at what you may want to update from that campaign. So yeah, it's the same URL, it's the same page. I would definitely take a look at updating some of the content and refreshing it. Um, it doesn't have have to be a full rebuild. Um, you can just do some small edits to make sure that your campaign is fresh and new. Um, and most likely a lot of the donors that gave to you during a Community Thrives will come back and give again during Cincinnati Gives. So you want to give them something new and show them that you've refreshed your page so that they know they're giving to a current campaign and not just seeing an old campaign that has ended. Um, so that's, I hope, a, a helpful answer. The, the actual page itself is in fact the same. It's your nonprofit profile. Um, however, I would just urge you to update the content or at the very least make sure that there are no references to that past giving event, um, a community thrives on your profile. Um, so donors know that you're campaigning for Cincinnati Gives. Hopefully that makes sense. Let's see. Um, Oh, so there's a, an interesting, another question from Christy. Um, can the custom tab be a story? Uh, yeah, absolutely. You can use that custom tab for whatever you would like. Um, so whatever your heart desires can go in that custom tab. I just gave a few suggestions of, you know, uh, you know, some things that people might not want to have in their main primary story that might make more sense in a custom tab. But if you want to use that as sort of an addendum to your primary story um, and have some more information that people can pursue there, absolutely. You can basically put whatever you want. It's totally open. Um, that section is just a blank page that you can use the text editor to uh, populate. So yeah, there's nothing in, in specific that needs to go there. You can put whatever you would like in that custom tab. All right, just uh, going through the chat. Thank you so much for bearing with me. Um, oh, okay. So this is another great question from Christy. You are a rock star with all of these fantastic questions. Um, can you talk about featured campaigns and supporting campaigns? Absolutely. So featured campaigns is a section on your profile where you can spotlight pages connected to your nonprofit that you would like to highlight. So for instance, if you had a board challenge for um, Cincinnati Gives, which is something that you are able to do, if you had a page that your board was using to fundraise, you could put that in your featured campaigns. Um, if you had a really great peer-to-peer -peer fundraiser that was started by a volunteer, you can put that in your featured fundraiser. Um, so basically, that's a curated list of any connected pages that you would like to spotlight. If you have nothing there, that section will not display to your donors or anybody who visits your page. Um, when you are in editing mode on your profile, that will show to uh, that'll show to to you. But when your donors are on the page, if you have no information there, um, it won't show. They won't be able to see it, so they won't see any blank spaces where featured campaigns could be. It'll just not appear to them at all. Um, and your supporting campaigns are. It's basically a list that you don't curate of any campaigns connected to your nonprofit. So it would just kind of be, it's like a search basically for any um, pages that are connected to your nonprofit, like peer-to-peer -peer campaigns. Um, there's not really any particular order to them um, that we just sort of pull them in from our search. So you have less control over that one, um, but it just shows any pages that are connected to your nonprofit so that people can you know, see what else you're doing for Cincinnati Gives. Um, if you do have pages showing there that you would like to hide, you can do that from your campaign screen 
on your admin dashboard. So um, your campaign screen, which we didn't get into in any great depth, that'll show you basically every page that's connected to your nonprofit's profile. So if you have peer-to-peer -peer pages or um, you know fundraisers that you've started in the past and you don't want them to show on your profile because they're old or you just don't want them there for whatever reason um, because they don't look good, you can hide those pages from searches and that will also hide them in the supporting campaign section. Um, so hopefully that made sense. Um, if you look at the section, that'll definitely make sense to you. Um, but if you have any questions about those sections in particular, just email support and we can help you make sure that those are displaying what you would like to display. All right, um, so let's see. I think that's it for questions. I'll give everybody just another minute to um, enter any questions that you would like um, answered. If not, you can always uh, contact support, you can contact me, or you can contact Ivy with any questions you may have after the webinar. Um, and we are recording this. So uh, once I have a chance to upload it to YouTube, you'll be able to find the recording on the nonprofit toolkit. We'll go ahead and embed the video there and you can rewatch any sections if you need clarification about your profile. Um, but it looks like that is it for questions. Um, thank you so much to Ivy for monitoring the chat that it was super helpful. Um, and everybody had really fantastic questions. Um, but yeah, thank you all for spending time with us today. Um, good luck for Cincinnati Gives. Happy fundraising. Um, and feel free to contact support with any questions that you may have. Um, and thank you so much for um, co hosting this with me, Ivy. Thank you so much and thank you to everyone for joining and you guys know feel free to reach out to me with any questions or the team at mighty cause we would love to help. Thank you. Absolutely have a great day everyone.